Okay. Okay, here we go. All right. We'll just give it a few seconds or we'll just make sure everybody can get online. How's it going, everybody? Very difficult to play the guitar under these conditions, but um, I'll just wait a few minutes. Sorry, very difficult, but um, you know, just want to take some minor precautions. You know. Anyways, I'm just uh, letting it go, just to let people, you know, log on. Hopefully, uh, all of our reach out people will be able to log on. It's kind of weird. I know this was a challenge just to set this up because you know I'm kind of tech savvy, but with some things not so tech savvy. So, but we're gonna get into it. All right. We're in God's house, amen? So, here we go. Uh, today, what do you think the message is gonna be on? Fear and anxiety, right? I know you guys are like, okay, we've heard about 50 million messages from pastors about fear and anxiety, but it's still something we need to talk about because us pastors are here to encourage people and we're here to help edify the church uh, with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So tonight's message will be fear and anxiety. And behind the camera is my lovely wife. She's gonna be doing the switching. So hopefully all the slides work. Um, this is kind of our first, well, it is our first run, so we'll just see how it goes, okay? So fear and anxiety, we know what those things are, right? Um, if you go to the next slide, there was a study done at the Chapman or Chapman University, um, and it talks about something uh, pretty, pretty trippy. It says the Chapman University survey of American Fears Wave 3, 2016, provides an unprecedented look into the fears of average Americans. In April of 2016, a random sample of 1,511 adults from across the United States were asked to level, were asked to their level of fear about 79 different fears across a huge variety of topics, ranging from crime, the government, disasters, personal anxieties, technology, ugh, and many others. So it's kind of a small survey, but an interesting one just to take a little look at. So the slide that we're gonna show you, um, as you can see from left to right, uh, corruption of government officials mm, that is uh, some of it's reasonable I can understand uh, terrorist attack on nations yep inadequate funds for the future I think a lot of people are worrying about that right now because a lot of jobs and companies are having to close uh, victim of terrorism gun control loved ones dying economic financial collapse Identity theft, loved ones seriously ill, that's a big one with uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus. And then affordable health care. That These are huge topics being debated among uh, even Christians today can't really figure out what we can agree on on certain policies. And But, you know, to God be the glory, he's going to guide us. If people are really looking for truth, if they're really looking for what God wants, they will find it, right? So if you go to the next slide, um, the slide says, oftentimes fear and anxiety can push us into unhealthy behavior spiritually and physically, and many of you already know, we've seen um, what's happened to people when they have no hope, they have this sense of nihilism, which is like life's meaningless, we're just here by chance, let's just, and enjoy what we can but there's still people wrestling with emptiness and meaninglessness and all they have is the alcohol the drugs um, you know fame money and so 
you know, they're in a, a very deep state of despair. And you know what? Christians are, can be vulnerable to falling into these categories of despair and nihilism because um, we believe there is uh, an enemy. We, we call him the devil, Satan. Scripture describes him as a thief who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, right? So our next slide is just a picture of, you know, a woman interrupting. It looks like a court hearing. There's just people in panic right now. Um, you've seen it on TV, you've seen it a million times all over Facebook, and um, it is, it's sad to see, but sometimes we can be feeling that on the inside, we just might not express it as some people outwardly, but still Christians can have that fear on the inside, but just they, they cover it up. But we want to get to the root issue um, of our, our problems, and that we need to go to God to help us you know get that fixed so the next slide right here says fear and anxiety can also create insecurity uh, there is this woman named Deborah Winger I believe she was an actress I'm not 100% but she was quoted right here saying most bad behavior comes from insecurity and just think about that even in your own personal experience when you felt like insecure you didn't know who you are you don't know what your purpose in life is you kind of can get bitter and take out your frustration on people, uh, especially young, young teenagers. Um, they often rebel because there's a wrestling inside. There's a hurt or there's something that they can't quite understand. They can't grasp why these things are happening to them. They feel insecure. And so a lot of bad behavior comes from that. They're trying to grab attention by being a bully, they're trying to grab attention by all kinds of unhealthy things, right? And so, when, when I was meditating and preparing for this message, um, I started to think of four essentials that we humans are longing for, right? Um, and as the slide shows, uh, meaning and significance, we're longing for that. That's just, um, uh, Solomon once wrote, you know, God has written eternity on our heart. Like we, we have this desire for a, like a story, a grand story to guide us, uh, some goal, final destination, right? Like, what are we doing? What's the whole point of our lives? Um, and does it amount to something in the end? For us Christians, we, we know, but we're also looking for love as the slide shows. We're looking for security, and I circled that one because I just quoted that um, quote from Deborah Winger that says, most bad behavior comes from insecurity. We're looking for uh, security and forgiveness. Every one of us needs forgiveness. Um, even a person who doesn't believe in God, when they make a mistake, they're also hoping and, and wishing somebody will forgive them of their bad behavior. There is this deep sense of, I, I, I wish people would forgive me. I wish people would, um, you know, uh, accept my apology. And so those are four essentials that we long for, right? And so as Christians, we know that Christ our Lord fulfills all of these. He is the person and foundation of our faith, right? Um, there, you, you can't go outside of Christ and find true Christianity because in the word Christianity is Christ, Christ-centered. So we don't believe in a philosophy. We might have philosophical assumptions about stuff and how to deal with certain situations politically, um, existentially or whatever, but we have a faith in a person, not necessarily an abstract idea. So Jesus our Lord fulfills the meaning and significance, love, security, and forgiveness. So the next slide, I'm going to read um, Psalm 46.10, and it says, God says, the word God is, um, whatever he says is true, we believe. His word is infallible, without error. He says, be still and know that I am God, I will be praised in all the nations, I will be praised throughout the earth. Now, somebody from another culture is gonna be like, uh, hello, there's many cultures that don't worship Yahweh, Jesus Christ, you know, we know that, but we have seen 
the Holy Spirit move and pour out throughout all the nations and you will find a Christian in pretty much almost every nation. Not yet because Jesus talks about how all the gospel will be spread to all four corners of the earth and then his return. So we know there's a lot of people who have not heard of Jesus. But in the end, we believe every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. So we can be rested on that truth that no matter what you're feeling, this is what we hold dear to, that God is going to have the glory and he will make things right, right? So the next slide, I have a picture of Jacob wrestling with God. And I mention this a lot of times when I speak because I just think it's so profound, so interesting. The word Israel, Israel means wrestling with God. When Jacob was wrestling with God, um, you know, his hip busted. Right, and then God changed his name from Jacob to Israel, which means wrestling with God. So it's so profound because if we're honest with ourselves, we do wrestle, especially obviously uh, in, in this life, we don't know everything. We can't see um, what's coming ahead uh, all the time. We don't have all knowledge, all foreknowledge and all that. So we wrestle with the sovereignty of God many times but at the same time, deep in us, we want him. We want to know what's true. We want to know how to deal with this fear and anxiety that can build up, especially now in this crazy time. So I'm gonna once again read another Bible verse in Lamentations chapter three. It's out of the contemporary English version. It's more modern way of English, of modern English. Um, and we have the prophet Jeremiah speaking this right here. Well, the tradition goes, uh, Jeremiah wrote most of Lamentations. So that's the tradition in the church history. So let's go to Lamentations 3.18. It writes, or he writes, I tell myself, I am finished. I can't count on the Lord to do anything for me. Just thinking of my troubles and my lonely wandering makes me miserable. That's all I ever think about and I am depressed. So we, we've been there. We have been to a point where something is, is in our mind that it is very hard to let go of. Um, it just wants to replay like a bad movie just over and over and over again. And right here, Jeremiah is being honest. It's like, that's all I ever think about, you know? And that's the thing where he's being honest before God, and that's why I love the Bible, because it doesn't sugarcoat reality. It gives us the hard truth, but it also gives us the assurance and hope that this isn't all we get. There's something beyond that we are longing for. As I quoted Solomon, that God wrote eternity in our hearts. He put it there. So um, let's read on. Verse 21 says... Then I remember something that fills me with hope. The Lord's kindness never fails. If he had not been merciful, we would have been destroyed. The Lord can always be trusted to show mercy in each morning. Deep in my heart, I say, the Lord is all I need. I can depend on him. And that context is where it's the fall of Jerusalem, where the Israelites were just, you know, rebelling against God and and they had to go through the consequences. But I love it where it says, the Lord can always be trusted, not sometimes, not when we're feeling like it. It's like, it's always he can be trusted. And that's where you have to just meditate on, day and night, right? And um, so as I read the next slide, we must continue to make a conscious effort daily not just weekly on Sunday or whatever, but daily to depend on and trust in God. And I know it sounds like a cliche. I mean, I mean, I grew up in church and I saw all the, the troubles around the world and I've seen suffering and I've gone through certain struggles of my own. And you just hear the pastors and people say, just cheer up, just trust God. And, and it is the truth that we have to trust God, as I, I said right here, but sometimes it's not 
we're not feeling it and we're still wandering we're wrestling like why does it have to be this way why does people have to be fighting over toilet paper why is uh, there corruption in governments all over the world why are there poor people but this is the outcome of the fallen world this is the the sin nature came into this earth this universe from the rebellion in the garden of eden um, that is our meta narrative that's our grand story that helps us to make sense of reality and we believe that this isn't just a mythological story we see that there is something wrong in the universe there is something that we recognize as this ought not to be right you guys are watching the news all day and you're like that ought not to be well how can that ought not to be if this was all just random chance so we know that there is something pulling us toward a higher um, law a higher, a higher moral standard and of course we know we can't make it on our own we need the help of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit right so now I'm gonna read out of Proverbs 12 25 contemporary English version again uh, it's written worry is a heavy burden ain't that the truth but a kind word always brings cheer now this one really I want to chew on because you know there is a lot of um, corruption going on and you want to just like boom like like tell people like what's what they're doing wrong and uh, especially today with people like just fighting and stuff or just like panicking like you want to just like what what are you doing like why why are you doing that but we have to tell the truth in a loving way and as it says right here a kind word can always bring cheer so you just be like hey you know what times are crazy right now but I know that Jesus is in control, Jesus loves me, and Jesus loves you. Take care. Just something simple. You never know how far that can go. It sounds cliche, it sounds, I know, it can sound like a broken record, but it's the truth. The truth doesn't change. Humans change constantly, but the truth is, is concrete. It's, it's reality. So that's uh, another verse. And I love, I love what this picture shows that God's word is, is God breathed. He poured out his spirit upon the men who wrote down these verses, but it wasn't man's intellect and own reasoning. This was something divine being poured into him, and that pen was just writing something amazing. So it says, let God's word comfort you and encourage you. So I love that picture right there. It's pretty cool, a young lady reading the Bible and God's spirit is just uh, breathing on her, you know, as she's being enlightened by the word of God. Now, I was just reading a book about, you know, the enlightenment a little bit, and it's like man is always trying to solve everything on his own human intellect and reason. And we can't deny the fact that we reason every day when you go to work, when you're calculating your finances, like, of course, we have a mind that thinks and we're supposed to think because we're made in the image of God. But at this time, we can't uh, solve everything. We can't um, expect this perfect world, especially right now. We want everyone to just be safe. We do. And we want nobody sick. But the reality is showing us that this is spreading. This is causing issues. But we know that something good is going to come out of it there it's i mean you could call it a silver lining or whatever you want to call it but us christians believe that all good things work for the glory of god for, and those who love him will will be uh taken in the fruit of that so i'm going to read uh first peter once again contemporary english version um, and the title right here is Helping Christian Leaders, because right now the leaders need a lot of prayer. So uh, here we go. Uh, verse, uh, chat, first, uh, first Peter 5, I'm sorry, chapter 5, it goes, Church leaders, I'm writing to encourage you. I too am a leader as well as a witness to Christ's suffering, and I will share in his glory when it is shown to us. Verse 2. Just as shepherds watch over their sheep, you must watch over everyone God has placed in your care. Do it willingly in order to please God 
and not simply because you think you must. Let it be something you want to do instead of something you do merely to make money. Don't be bossy to those people who are in your care, but set an example for them. Then when Christ, the chief shepherd, returns, you will be given a crown that will never lose its glory. All of you, young people, should obey your elders. In fact, everyone should be humble toward everyone else. The scriptures say God opposes proud people, but he helps everyone who is humble. Be humble in the presence of God's mighty power, and he will honor you when the time comes. God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to him. So that is really relevant to us leaders, and it's also relevant to you because it's, it's teaching us to be humble. It's teaching us that we are not here, like, I know sometimes there's a lot of people out there, they, they, they don't like where they work, we know. And I've been there, I've had some places where it's like, you thank the Lord for work, but it's not something that you're passionate about, but you're also thankful that you have money and food uh, to eat and warm clothes. But a lot of people are trying to get into ministry these days and just for all the money. And God's, God knows who his sheep are, right? Uh, you will know a true believer by their fruit. So during these times of chaos, you know, it's like God is, you're going to see God separating, you know, the sheep from the goats. And uh, we're going to really, God's going to really test those who, who say they're Christians, you know, and we have to be ready for that. And um, we just have to have the faith because right now it's going to be tested, right? So there's a slide I'm going to show you now. It's uh, that one picture, like of all the things people worry about, you know, and um, it's like, should we worry about these things? I mean, in the next slide, I, I show this guy laying down, you know, just chilling on a, a bench. Should we just have, you know, kind of be hippie about it, man? Like, whatever, dude, it's all gonna be cool, man. You know, should we just have this like apathy towards all these issues? Or should we just be on full battle front? And I think there's two extremes. There's obviously you can go way over the deep end of trying to fight and use your own strength and your own might and skill to try to solve what's going on right now to try to fix that insecurity or fear you have. But there's also the other extreme where you're just like, whatever, I'm just gonna get high and forget about this, it'll all blow by. Both extremes are not good, okay? We have to be concerned about certain things. And I'm gonna read now out of Galatians. Uh, this is a New Living Translations, NLT. Uh, we harvest what we plant, the title. So chapter six, dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens and in this way, obey the law of Christ. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. Pay careful attention to your own work, for then you will get the satisfaction of a job well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anyone else, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. So pay close attention to how you are walking during these times, how you are representing Jesus Christ. Are you being a light during this crazy dark time? Are you being someone that, um, that someone can walk up to and feel comfortable sharing? You know, that's what we want. We want to be approachable. Like Jesus, to me, was the most approachable person ever. You know, you could just walk up to him and share your heart out. He was a listener. I like this one quote that somebody said. I don't remember who said it, but wherever you're at, be all there. And for me, Jesus was all there everywhere. You know, he was looking at the individual, his soul. He was looking straight into his eyes. Every time someone came up to him, he was a God. He is a God of love. Amen. So now we're going to go on to verse seven. If, uh, if my wife will change the slide, she's doing a good job. Uh, don't be misled. 
You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Therefore, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially to those in the family of faith. So don't grow tired of doing good. There are so many times where you can, the enemy will come at you like that, where you're doing all this and just people keep, keep, keep getting meaner, more selfish, uh, more just um, into themselves. But you can't give up because that's what the enemy wants. He wants you to say, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to go home. I'm just going to kick it. I'm going to Netflix and chill, shut the door. People are crazy. Goodbye. And then the enemy's got you isolated. And then he's going to kick in fear in there. He's going to kick in. You'll be on YouTube watching all these crazy videos of random people that are going to put fear in your mind. And then you're going to lock your doors. And, you know, that, that it sounds kind of extreme, I know. <laughs> but it could happen. You know, it could happen. So especially help those in the faith. Uh, call people during this time. Say, hey, bro, do you need any help? Like, do you need a prayer? Like, we're not, we can't. Like, there's no, like, people walking around with guns and saying you can't go over to someone's house and pray for them. Like, yes, use the freedom we got, right, in Jesus' name, right? So the next slide, I have another quote, uh, an unknown author. Um, and many of you have heard this. This has kind of been all over Facebook and stuff. It says, God, give me strength to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So man, just chew on that right now because we're always, we're control freaks by nature. Our nature wants to control and our nature wants to, um, we want to set up, we're like self-reliant too much. And that's why I think God allows certain things because he wants us to be totally dependent on him. Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are those who recognize their spiritual poverty so God is wanting us to recognize our need for him and we can't do that when we're being like, you know, self-reliant. Like oh, and here in the West, it's easy to get that way because we have our 401ks, we got all this and people have worked hard for that. But in the end, that can't save your soul. There, you have to have the spiritual food in life or else, you know, you're gonna be missing out on truth. So we're almost done, we're almost done. We got a few more slides. Um, you should really check out this guy. He's a really interesting um, writer. His name's Chris Jami. I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. Chris Jami. He once wrote, Faith in its most correct form never removes responsibility. It removes fear of responsibility. The results are complete opposites with the greater saying, God's will is my delight. And so that's something you need to meditate on is doing God's will your delight and we know there's gonna be that wrestle because God does challenge you he challenges your heart like when when a, someone came up to Jesus and asked a question to challenge him how did he respond with the question you know he's trying to get that person to look within their own heart and 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 look at their intentions what is their true intentions you know and is God's word really your delight is the truth really something you hold to because our human nature wants to reason away conviction boom god says oh you need to help this out you need to give this last piece of toilet paper to somebody and you're like well i your mind will go i need it they can get sit, get it somewhere else they they have a mind of their own you have to listen to the holy spirit during these times christians are need or need to be the light so this message in the next slide, it says, I hope and I pray that this has warned, challenged, and encouraged you. Because whenever I do a message, uh, God always puts it on my heart to warn, challenge, and encourage. Because I see Jesus doing that in the scriptures. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm studying what Jesus is uh, teaching on or who he's, he's talking to, he's always challenging the human heart. And he's always warning people. Didn't Jesus warn us about Hades, hell? Uh, he warned us about false prophets. He warned us uh, that there would be signs of the end times. And many people are wondering, is it close? I, I think it is. But he also encourages you with love. 
and that's that's beautiful so we hope and pray that here at reach out because this is a reach out um, live stream our first one during this crazy time um, we pray that God is going to get the glory. We know he is. Scripture says that. But through your life, we, we pray that you will accept the things Jesus is trying to show you during this time, the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you use those gifts that he's given you. And knock. the, uh, the, the Bible says, knock and the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. So during this time, look for an opportunity to be a witness. Look for an opportunity to be the light. And don't just get, I mean, it's wise to stay uh, healthy, use those precautions, as I was using jokingly with the mask and, and gloves, but obviously you wanna be wise. We are made of physical. We have a mind, body, and spirit. So you should be taking care of your temple during these times especially. But at the same time, don't get locked up and sheltered. Uh, you could still call people. We're using technology right here. Uh, we're gonna use, you know, it for the glory of God. And so, you know, to God be the glory and continue to, to reach out. I mean, that's why we call ourselves reach out because that's what God wants us to do is reach out to this generation. And, and you know, we, we want to reach everybody, whether it's a teenager. Uh, our primary focus in this ministry is young adults. Uh, age 18 to 30 but you know what we want and hope this reaches anybody to be honest like you know let's just go for it you know so with that said um, I hope this encouraged you once again and um, I hope it worked I hope this is actually running pretty well um, I don't know honey is everything looking good she's giving me the okay so um, let's just bow our heads in prayer and uh, ask God for more wisdom during this time and ask God for more peace and you know what? Ask God for some laughter and joy, man. We need we need to like have fun during this time too because you know a lot of families are having to work together more. Man, pull out some board games, pull out some Bible stories, pull out some testimonies, make make some joy in your house, right? So let's just pray for that right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, I just thank you that we're even able to do this, that you have allowed us to use technology for your glory, that we are hopefully reaching somebody out there, God. And Lord, we just thank you that you use us. Once again, we know, God, you don't need us, but you choose to use us because you love us, Lord. You are all self-efficient. You are all powerful, almighty. What, what like the scriptures say, uh, what, what, is, what is little me can do, Lord? What is, what is man that you think so much about him? And it's because you created us and you love us and you don't leave us without so, Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your scriptures, your word. And, Lord, we just pray that this message touch somebody and that we can go out and be the light into the nation and our neighborhoods and wherever God places us. And, Lord God, continue to give us wisdom. Lord, we need wisdom. Wisdom comes from above. All good things come from above. And we want good things in our mind, in our heart. And we want good things going on in our body and our cells. Lord Jesus, please help our body, help our immune systems to stay strong. And once again, all this for you, Jesus, in your precious name. Amen. All right, guys. So um, keep reaching out. All right. Thanks, honey.